What's up guys, Theo here, doing a prediction for Henry Cejudo versus Marab Davalashvili. So right now, Marab Davalashvili is a minus 235 favorite, and the comeback on Henry Cejudo is plus 170 on DraftKings. And guys, I like Henry Cejudo here. I think plus 170 is a really great price for him. Given the level of competitor that he is, the level of competition that he's faced in the UFC, and um, his skill set, man, I really think this is a good price for him. And I think it's a good stylistic matchup as well. I know the public is kind of high, so to speak, on Marab Davalishvili right now. There's kind of this ominous feeling that he is just going to, like, defeat anybody in front of him and kind of, like, win the belt or whatever. There's this kind of almost, like... There's this almost like cynical inevitability that you kind of hear people go on about with Marab where everyone kind of knows he doesn't have the best fight style. He's not, he's kind of a square dude. He's not really fun to like listen to or anything like that. He doesn't have that cool of a personality. So he's very unpopular. And he's one of these unpopular dudes that just keeps winning, right? He's one of these Bilal Muhammad's. He's one of these like Aljamain Sterling who, um, you know, Aljamain Sterling, at first, he wasn't like that. But when he became champion, he was. Especially in the lead-up to the fight against Sean O'Malley, a lot of people were kind of, like, making these cynicism bets where they're like, Aljamain's just going to drag him down and, and, and choke him. Just drag him down and break him. And, you know, they kind of they kind of bet this out of, like, a weird form of, like, insecurity about, like, I don't really know what it is. But, um... I see the same thing happening with Marab here, where everyone's kind of like, yeah, he sucks, I hate his fighting style, but he's just going to keep winning, he's just going to keep grinding people to boring decisions. The thing about Marab is I really feel like that, like that cynical insecurity about him, I feel like is really making people overestimate what he's capable of here. You take a step back, you look at this guy's fights. Okay, he's on like a nine fight win streak or something like that. Very impressive. But you really look at who he's fought, he really has not fought the best competition. I know people are going to say I'm crazy because he fought Peter Yan, and um, he's just been hanging around in the UFC for a long time. But guys, before the Peter Yan fight, Marab Davalashvili's best opponent was Jose Aldo, who was literally, that was his retirement fight. Jose Aldo was way past his prime at that point. And that was his highest level of competition before Peter Yan. So you really go back, this dude hasn't really beat a lot of, like, prime great 135ers. He hasn't. He lost to Ricky Simone. I mean, he's got a couple good wins uh, against, you know, against good fighters. But when you look at the Peter Yawn fight, that was kind of a really bad stylistic matchup for Peter Yawn. You know, Peter Yawn is somebody that he takes a long time to set up his shots and he's kind of more of a technique guy. He's not a knockout guy. And he doesn't have any real kind of ground game. He has good takedown defense. But Peter Yan never goes to the ground. He never uses jujitsu. He never wrestles. Whenever he has to wrestle, it's always a struggle for him. So that was a really bad stylistic matchup. And when you look at what Marab's doing, Marab has a very basic fighting style. Okay, he is just very... There's not, like, really a lot of levels to it. He is a really hard worker, and he's really physical, and he's skilled, but he's not doing a lot of interesting things. He's not really setting up takedowns super well. Marab's thing is his volume. So everyone talks about, oh, he shot like 50 takedowns in that fight or something. Guys, what people don't talk about is Marab only landed like a handful of those, all right? Out of the 50 he shot, I think he ultimately ended up landing, what, like, was it maybe 10 he actually was successful with? That's not really good in my opinion. Okay, 10 takedowns over the course of a fight. Yeah, that's great if that's all you're doing. You're just going to go forward, rush, and do this really predictable wrestling thing where you're just going to basically push Peter Yan against the fence and do nothing. I mean, you actually watch the guy fight. He's really not doing anything. He just completely physically overwhelmed Peter Yan in that fight. But there's not, there's not any flair. He's not winning big moments, right? He just has the output. That's really all he has. He didn't even really damage Peter Yan very much in that fight. And, um, you know, that was a big victory for him, even though that was a really good matchup for him. He was the underdog there. So 
I just don't see the same thing happening in the fight with Henry Cejudo because you're talking about Cejudo here. Cejudo is a guy who does not have those MMA weaknesses that Peter Yan does. He's not as technical of a, of a kind of like, you know, boxer as Peter Yan is. But Cejudo has his own striking um, credentials and his own good techniques on the feet. And he's got the wrestling defense. And he's got the jujitsu defense, right? So he's this is a good stylistic matchup for him. Marab is not going to present anything to Henry that he hasn't seen a thousand times before. Okay, yes, he lost to Aljamain Sterling. That was a razor close loss. He didn't do a ton in that fight, but Aljamain Sterling is a much more physical, powerful bantamweight than Marab is. Marab is not even big for bantamweight. He is um, kind of small, actually, whereas Aljamain's huge. And so Aljamain was able to deal with a lot of Henry's wrestling, but Henry was still putting it on him in that fight, man. And um, yeah, I, I just don't see Marab being the same physical threat and being able to stuff those, you know, those attempts that Henry is going to make himself. Henry is one of those guys that he is kind of a true mixed martial artist. Um, he's one of the dudes that he will go into the cage and adapt the way he fights. Oftentimes I say never expect a fighter to go in and do something completely different than they ever do. But Henry has shown a great willingness to do that. He will be losing fights on the feet, and so he will get a submission. He will be not having great exchanges, and so he pushes things against the fence. He gets people down. He will be maybe not able to get somebody down because of movement. He'll TKO them. He times them. So he finds ways to win in all of his fights. And uh, the guy is an extremely high-level competitor, and I think he still has a chip on his shoulder, man. I think both these guys do, but I think we're looking at two guys with the chips on their shoulder, and uh, we got one dude who's a way, lever, way higher level skilled fighter <clears throat> with way more credentials, a way better resume. I mean, I think Henry could knock Marab Devalishvili out in this spot. I really do. I don't think Marab is this world beater that everyone's making him out to be. Again, I think it's like cynicism bets. It's the same thing as Aljamain. Everyone just betting on Aljamain because they kind of like, they want to be the dude that's like, huh, I knew the guy was overrated. I knew Sean O'Malley was going to get destroyed whenever he went up against a wrestler. You heard that all the time. You said, oh, like, oh, um, Alger's going to backpack him. Alger's going to drag him out. I know this is a different fight, but it's the same mentality. It's it's like you're, you're so confident in a guy because you hate his fighting style that you are almost like betting against yourself. You know what I mean? And so I don't like to do that. I don't make bets out of fear. That's not how I bet. When I watch these two guys fight, I'm not impressed by what I see from Marab. Yes, he's pulled off some slick victories. Yes, he's got a crazy high work rate. Yeah, he's good. I've heard he's a killer in the gym, guys. But when it's in the cage, I see a different level and uh, another layer to what Henry Cejudo does. And at plus 170, Henry Cejudo was the favorite going into the Aljamain Sterling fight, guys. And we're getting him at plus 170 against a lower level fighter here. And he seems tuned in for this camp, man. He seems to be taking this really, really seriously. I don't think the caliber of athlete and competitor that Henry Cejudo is, I don't think he's going to go in there and just not show up. I don't think he's going to go in there and not use his tools. So, you know, you've got a fight where if this goes to decision, eh, either one of these guys could win a decision, right? If it goes to decision, they could give it to Marab. They totally could. He, he, he will do enough of the right things in the fight that he could win a decision. But guys, Henry is as likely, if not more likely, to win a decision here than Marab is. And Cejudo actually has the upside that I believe Cejudo can knock Marab out. And I don't think the same about Marab. I don't like Marab striking. I think it's very basic. And he's just, his stance, everything about what he does is very predictable. So if Henry Cejudo has any of his old instincts left, and I think he does, I think he's going to go in here and I think he's going to beat Marab Devalishvili. I think he's going to uh, outclass him. So give me Henry Cejudo here at plus 170 to win by TKO. Um, keep it locked in, guys. More picks coming later this week.